Israel says Hamas might be holding as many as 199 hostages taken captive in the terror attacks that killed some 1,400 people. One of those believed to have been taken captive is 21-year-old Mia Shem. She was abducted from the music festival where hundreds were killed in the attack. CNN spoke to Mia's mother and brothers last night about the video that Hamas released of their sister and their daughter. That's all we want, just to get Mia back to us. We are begging the world to bring my baby home. With us right now is CNN National Security Analyst Peter Bergen for more on this. Peter, thank you for coming in. You've had some conversations kind of leading in the, in the past days of what really are the aims and goals of Hamas. The IDF says that these, this hostage video being released is psychological warfare on Israeli civilians. What do you think it is? Well, there's that. It's also proof of life that the hostage has been taken. Uh, you know, in, in hostage-taking situations, often the terrorist group will release a video. Uh, obviously, it's very, very traumatizing for the family. Uh, but as you know, Kate, you've got uh, 199 hostages. Hamas claims 200, 250. You also have Palestine, Palestinian Islamic Jihad that claimed 30 hostages at the beginning. So it's still not very clear who exactly has been taken. Uh, so this is a proof of life, a video of, of one hostage. Um, and, you know, we've seen Tony Blinken go to, go to Qatar and speak to the Qatari government, which I think is probably the most fruitful uh, way that this might be resolved in some way that is, you know, the safe release of the hostages. Uh, the Qatari government uh, was very helpful getting five Americans out of Iran last month. Uh, they have sent hundreds of millions of dollars into Gaza in recent years. Uh, they have relations with Hamas. However, of course, you know, the political situation and the, and the military situation are all very, very complicated. But if there's going to be a peaceful resolution to some of this for the hostages, uh, the Qatari government is the most likely venue Peter, it's a staggering number of hostages, potential hostages, from a wide range of countries, not just Israeli, but countries all over the world. Why do you think Hamas did it? Are they getting what they want out of it? Uh, and is there the international outrage that you might have suspected from it? Well, what they're getting out of it is, first of all, human shields. Go back to the first Gulf War. Saddam did something, Saddam Hussein did something very similar, which is he gathered literally hundreds of human shields to prevent any kind of attack against him. Uh, this is uh, not quite on that scale, but very close, where you've got at least 200 hostages, it seems. Uh, so, A, the, you know, kind of uh, dissuading uh, any kind of Israeli military action is part of it. Two, obviously, some deal down the road. Hamas has nothing to show for this conflict, uh, you know, in terms of any real political goal. If they can get some prisoners back, uh, obviously that's, uh, you know, something that they want. And maybe that was the intention at the beginning of this. Obviously, it, it, the, the operation uh, became, you know, uh, much bigger and they killed more people perhaps than, than they initially went in, thinking that that, what, that, what, that was the plan. Uh, and is it getting the international attention? I think the short answer is yes. I mean, you've got apparently 30 nationalities of various kinds, um, and there seems to be a great deal of concern around the world, including uh, from the United States, about these hostages. Uh, and hopefully there can be a successful resolution, starting, let's start with the children and the, and the elderly and, the, and people who are sick, and see if uh, they can be released first. Now, Peter, Israel has said that at least you know, the public statement is that they are not going to be negotiating around, around with regard to the hostages, as, you know, Israeli leaders seem to, you know, point to that they say this is where the leadership of Hamas has come from, from the release of, of members of Hamas from Israeli prisons in the past, which presents exactly what you're laying out, which is what, are, what is the best scenario then? Well, I don't know. Look, I mean, for gov this is a huge dilemma for governments. Uh, yeah. You know, the stated position of the United States, for instance, is we'll make no concessions to terrorist groups. Well, in practice, we will make concessions. We'll do prisoner exchanges, uh, you know, do, with governments that we uh, don't recognize, like Iran. We'll do prisoner exchanges with uh, terrorist groups like the Taliban, as we've done in the past. 
And Israel has had a long record of doing prisoner exchanges. So, I mean, the, polit the politics around this right now may prevent them doing anything at all and having any kind of communications with Hamas. But, you know, this can, Kate, this can go on for many months. The mm. military operation in Gaza, if you look at the, you remember the uh, attack in Mosul against ISIS? It took many, many months, almost a year of planning for the Iraqi army and the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Special Forces advising on the ground to extirpate ISIS from Mosul, which is a not dissimilar kind of operation than what we're going to see unfolding uh, in Gaza. So, I mean, we could be, this, this is not something that's going to be over in a matter of days. Yeah. Peter Bergen, great to have you on this morning. Thank you very much.